on Farm Kenya Special, where we are talking about wet markets and food safety. Now, before we went on the break, uh, we were just looking at some of the different actors and some of the different players um, in, this, uh, in this field, really from the Ministry of Agriculture to the Ministry of Health, the county governments themselves. And on Slido, we have a question here from Wal Njale, and I would pose this to Mr. Henning. With the changing of the approach towards food safety and focusing responsibility on the food business operator, how are the regulating agencies going to synchronize legislation, supervision, inspection, etc., on the operators? I think um, that's, that's a good question. How do we synchronize this, Mr. Henning? <coughs> yeah, I think uh, both uh, Charles uh, from DVS and also Josephine uh, from HCD touched upon it uh, before the break uh, because the, the overlap in mandates and the many institutions from three ministries that regulate uh, the area uh, of course make, uh, make it difficult uh, to coordinate, but the work we have started uh, to synchronize and be clear on the mandate and who who takes the responsibility when uh, will help a lot in uh, in changing also the approach to the control of food business operators. Uh, <clears throat> I think in Europe we had the same situation 20, 30 years ago. In Denmark, we uh, we were uh, we we had uh, the regulation and the control at municipalities and with also with different ministries in involved. We did not have a a single entry to food safety as we have now. Today we have uh, the Danish Veterinary and Food Administration, and. Uh, I'm sure uh, that a Kenyan food authority would also make it easier uh, to have a, a one approach uh, to the inspection and control of food business operators. Uh, what we do now, uh, because we have the mandates, the laws and the regulation right now, what we do now is to have a joint approach to, uh, to the inspection system. <clears throat> so first, of course, each institution, each ministry has to agree on the highest level uh, <coughs> this turnaround in approach to the control system. Uh, Kenya, up till now, um, has very much regulated the food safety area by trying to control the end products, that the food is healthy when it reaches the consumer. And that's a really, really uh, a difficult or impossible uh, thing to do. You can monitor and uh, you can know what kind of contamination is in the market and you can put measures, but the actual control system has to be uh, with a focus on the food business operators in the whole chain from the farmer, transporter, the um, <coughs> Uh, the retailer, the small kiosk, and to the restaurant, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm very sure uh, that if the, the, the different authorities that regulate the area now, through the multi-annual national control plan, can coordinate their efforts and agree on common uh, principles of inspection directed towards uh, the food business operators, it can uh, be done within the existing framework. I think, uh, to my mind, it, it would be a benefit for Kenya to have a single uh, directorate, uh, but it can still be done within the framework uh, Kenya has right now. Uh, I think the next step where we move into is a training of inspectors because the mandate is at the county level so the coordination between the counties and the central competent authorities has to be very, very strong. You uh, cannot have a system with uh, 47 uh, different counties with different approaches to the control system. <clears throat> so the coordination here has to be 
very, very good. And the training of inspectors is also very, very important. Uh, we all know that it's not enough to, to have uh, nice papers and uh, laws that support the control of food business operators. Uh, the, the, the people in the field that work with the companies, the small business operator every day, they need to know what kind of questions and what kind of answers they should uh, expect uh, to prove that the food business operator know what he or she is doing. At that point, so actually, we have... There uh, is uh, uh, quite Hedges. some efforts. <laughs> it is a challenge, but it can be done. There's, there's actually uh, an anonymous uh, comment here on Slido. Uh, somebody is saying that lack of facilities like washrooms and water sources and lack of dumping areas are some of the biggest issues we have as traders. The problem lies with the county government, yet we pay for these services. Then uh, James from Nakuru um, is also, uh, this is a question really, that what is the Ministry of Health doing to ensure Kenyans are sensitized on food safety measures in wet markets? And I think I'd like to throw this question to uh, Brenda because one, one of the issues that uh, you have touched on the panelists here is about the infrastructure uh, within the wet markets. So what is the ministry doing? And just a comment on that issue about, you know, the lack of sanitary facilities in some of these uh, wet markets as you give us your closing remarks. Brenda. Okay, thank you, Masi. Once again, once again, um, the ministry actually we uh, of most of the requirements that are supposed to be in a wet market are well stipulated even in the Act. That is in, in the Public Health Act. So the ministry has been working very closely with the county government, and just as. Uh, uh, Henning has uh, alluded and also Josephine that uh, we are already piloting in counties uh, that's Nakuru County and Nyandarwa County uh, putting up uh, in better infrastructure of course with the blessing from the county government so that uh, most of these basic facilities are available in the in the market that is the toilets and also waste management and not just the waste management being uh, collected and put somewhere also seeing if how it's going to be recycled into either gas uh, energy or at least to be useful so there's so much that is already happening in that space and once we are able to get it right in these two counties that is Nakuru and Nyandarwa then this can be rolled out to all the other remaining uh, 45 counties. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So there's so much that is already on the ground that is happening in that space. Own, Thank um, you. From your own experience, what you're seeing and seeing the pandemic uh, that every country is trying to manage, what would you say the future of wet markets is in Kenya? Well, if we are to put our structures in place, properly, that is making sure that our markets have uh, uh, clean water, clean safe water. We make sure that uh, the, stru the structures are renovated and uh, we allow more space. You know, you, you've seen how the markets, they look like we are selling our stuff on the floor. We are mixing everything, the dry and the wet products. So if we're able to separate those, if we're able to just put our, our the, the markets to be run in a more orderly way, then we'll be able to move a step ahead. And of course, I would uh, suggest that like the community, these uh, uh, the committees that are running the markets at the moment, honestly, they should open up the space to allow in the private sector to step in, because so, this is, it, it should not be the issue that the Ministry of Health or the government is supposed to be providing all that. It's supposed to be a wholesome kind of uh, approach from all of us who are, uh, who, who are either traders or the regulators so that we own the process, all of us together. So once we own the process, then it means we'll all appreciate why our markets have to have clean water, why we need to have space people can move from one end to another without a lot of contact, 
why we need to have soap in, the, in these particular markets and uh, just to make sure that uh, we are able to be there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Coming to uh, Dr. Ochodo, um, you have really elaborated what the wet markets are, what the legislative framework and the legal frameworks that are needed would look like. Um, seeing where we are as a globe, um, do you think we are heading in the right direction and how long um, are we on that path to going to the right direction? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I think we are heading in the right uh, direction. Uh, the only problem is that uh, sometimes we do two steps forward and then one step backward and um, we tend to have uh, different excuses um, for not uh, meeting uh, the standards that we have put in place. Um, we have talked of the county governments uh, being in charge of these markets. And uh, usually um, when we get to them and uh, tell them to put in place some of the standards that uh, are there, um, they love their excuses in terms of um, uh, finance, personnel, and so on. They are not able to. But uh, I think uh, as regulators uh, or inspectors, we just need to put our feet down. Uh, because if we don't do that, and uh, you've already talked about COVID-19, uh, we know that is not going to be the end uh, because we still have a lot more uh, diseases in animals that um, have the potential to cross over to human beings, um, uh, particularly through food, um, these wet markets. And so uh, to protect our people, um, we just have to ensure that uh, we do um, the right thing. And so going forward, um, as uh, people concerned with ensuring that everything in these markets is done right, I think uh, we shall be meeting uh, the county governments, and this has already started through uh, the program. My pan fellow panelists have uh, referred to the AgriFi program. And um, discussing with them, because sometimes also things are not happening right because people just do not know uh, what is supposed to happen. And so once um, they have known what is supposed to happen, then the next thing uh, we shall be doing is uh, closing some of these markets uh, if things are not done right because we cannot take chances with the health of our people. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Ochodo. Josephine, uh, what is the way forward as you make your final remarks? Uh, Masi, for me, I see it as an opportunity um, because uh, if um, the wet markets, if uh, the concept takes off, it's actually an investment opportunity um, to private sector. And we've seen it work when uh, HCD provided facilities for parking, storage, and the handling of horticultural produce in a, same, a safe manner. Um, and, you know, it actually presented an opportunity for people who could not afford for could not afford uh, these uh, facilities to be able to use and handle their products in a safe manner. So similarly, for the wet markets, I see it as an opportunity for having a cool chain uh, for both storage, uh, handling, and also transportation. So then it is possible to minimize the contamination that arise due to poor handling or uh, suboptimal temperatures that are required to store products, and also the issue of uh, also uh, personnel that uh, are not uh, observing hygiene practices. And uh, the facility will only work, uh, Daktari, if we also capacity build the users. Remember, you can only practice or be responsible on uh, food hygiene issues if you are aware on what you need to do. So then the whole actors, um, transporters, uh, the food business operators, if a capacity built 
and uh, made aware on how to handle uh, products safely, then I think we'll be uh, moving uh, very far. So last but not least, I think I'd also like to highlight the issue of uh, traceability. Uh, because that has also been an issue uh, when we have a, a market that is really not organized. But with the wet uh, market concept, then it would be possible to be able to trace back and forth from the food business operator where they got their supplies of products and where they are selling their products. So then uh, within the competent authorities organized uh, through the uh, strategic sector cooperation, that would be able to start off the concept of uh, withdrawal or recall of products in case of uh, non-compliances. Because Daktari right now, uh, with the foodborne illnesses that um, uh, Brenda was discussing, it's really very difficult to trace the, the source of where the non-compliances arise in case of uh, lapses in um, food, safety, uh, food safety system. So uh, I'm seeing this more of an opportunity and uh, something that uh, we need to also invest more. And uh, through cooperation and collaboration with the county government and the other competent authorities, uh, then I think we'll be able to achieve uh, the objective that we are seeking in terms of food safety. Thank you. All right. Thank you uh, very much, Josephine. Last but not least, uh, Mr. Henning, uh, COVID-19 has been definitely a big lesson. What do you see as the future of wet markets in Kenya? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, a big lesson, and it's, it's, it's definitely not over. Uh, but uh, I think I would like to echo uh, very much our, our good partners uh, in uh, the veterinary authorities, in HED and health. All the authorities we are, we are working together with here, they are really committed to, to, to make changes. And uh, I think that is that looks into a quite uh, bright future for for kenya also in the regulation of the wet markets it's not solutions that we see tomorrow uh, but uh, i'm very sure we we are on uh, the right uh, on the right track uh, i think it was also mentioned by dr choro that the the authorities the central authorities has to put down their feet once in a while where you see very, very critical uh, cases. This is a matter of life and death. Uh, so I think there is also <clears throat> this is also an opportunity uh, for us to, to say to the counties that please don't see the county, the wet markets, market as a source of income only. This is uh, this is a matter of public health. Of course, uh, <clears throat> employment and nice places for, for farmers and small businesses to sell their products is very, very important. But I think the, the, the counties can move away for, from seeing this as a source of income also to uh, maybe to lease out the responsibility uh, to a private operator that will be easier to regulate under this framework we are discussing here of food business operators taking the responsibility. We have had these discussions through the, the, the new uh, food safety laws uh, with a number of counties and I know it's, it's super difficult to make changes but mm -hmm. I think that is it's that a, it's is a, a way uh, forward. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think, uh, yes, uh, all the conversations that have been there, I think it means it's a good start and the right direction to safeguard our wet markets because as we have seen globally, COVID-19 is a big lesson definitely and a wake-up call to make sure that our food markets are safe, uh, that the foods we get from this markets, whether they are animal produce or plant-based produce, that all of them are safe and they are not uh, channels to transmit food-borne uh, diseases. Uh, on this conversation, Farm Kenya Special, uh, I was joined by Mr. Henning Nigad, 
who is the Sector Councillor of Food and Agriculture at the Royal Danish Embassy, joining us from our city centre studios. Uh, Brenda Obura joining us from, Nairo from Nairobi, who is the lead instructor at the Ministry of Health Food Safety Unit. Uh, Dr. Charles Ochodo, who was here with us in studio, who is the Senior Deputy Director of Veterinary Services and the Head of Veterinary Governance and Policy at the Directorate of Veterinary Services. And then last but not least is uh, Josephine Natecho Simiu, who is the Manager in Interim Regulations and Compliance at Agriculture and Food Authority, Horticulture Crops Directorate. Um, I've been your host, Dr. Masi Korir. Thank you for all of you who have taken time to tweet us, who have taken time to comment on slido.com. Uh, we continue with these conversations offline because this food safety is still an, a going concern for all of us because, as we see, we are still battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Please stay safe, wear your mask, and wash your hands at all times. God bless. 25th of November, Micro Enterprises Support Program Trust in partnership with the Ministry of Health, Agrify, Danida and the European Union will explore the importance of food safety in our markets, emerging and re-emerging food safety concerns, legal and regulatory framework and infrastructure and capacity intervention in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Kenya.